everyone, this is Seki here. I wanted to bring you outside today. Thanks for joining me in the broom closet. It's a beautiful day here and I just wanted to uh, enjoy a little sunshine. You'll have to excuse the tractor noise in the background and my appearance because I just got off work, but I've been so excited to share a couple announcements with you. So first things first, I've been dying to tell you about this YouTube user slash these Instagram girls that remade some of the scenes from Practical Magic. They are called Bubble Pipe Productions and I'm going to link them in the corner and in the uh, description below because I I am having goosebumps talking about it. I, little 12 year old me watching the remakes of the scenes um, when Jillian and Sally are talking in the bedroom about Jimmy and also when they're arguing in the kitchen about Sally going to uh, tell Gary Hallett the truth. They did such a good job and I want everybody to pause this video and go check them out right now and come on back because afterward this video is going to be about some of my favorite art tools. I've had a couple of questions about what um, programs I use and what paint pens I use so I thought I would just take you through um, kind of what my favorites are. Another announcement is that uh, Ostara is kind of a time of like coming out or coming into your own and I wanted to share with you that I finally came out of the broom closet to my best friend Sally who I've mentioned before and she was like yeah like what's the big deal? <laughs> Um, she knew, I mean, she knows I am a practicing witch and pagan, however, she did not know that I had this YouTube and she was like, well, why wouldn't I want to listen to you ramble? So it was a load off my chest because she has always supported me, um, so that was something really, really big in my life that I was super excited to tell you. Another super exciting thing is I learned to drive a forklift at work. That is the coolest thing. It is so fun and terrifying at the same time. One last announcement. The Broom Closet Artistry's shop has been consolidated and condensed. I was on a few different platforms before. One was through Flare Dash, which uh, I used Twitch for a long time to stream my art live. And Flare Dash was a company that a friend of mine started that printed and sent, shipped um, your your artwork to people. And I'm uh, I was also on Etsy for a little while, where you could download some of my digital broom closet work. However, it became a lot and I really wanted to have it all in one place. So I will now be on Store Envy and I'm gonna link that also. But if you follow me on Instagram and you go on the link in my bio, it's through Linktree, it gives you a direct link there. And I'm going to have prints, I'm gonna have stickers, all different sizes. And uh, if there's any work that you have seen on my YouTube that you would like uh, to see in the shop, please let me know. As of right now, I'm waiting on two different prints and um, three different stickers and I can't wait. I'm so excited because I love, love stickers. So your to-do list is to check out Bubble Pipe Production. These girls are so cute. They're so talented. Um, and apart from them doing the remake of the Practical Magic scenes, they also have a, I think it's called Being Normal and it's a mini like a mini series about one girl just living her normal modern life and uh her best friend um tagging along with her however no one can see the best friend because she's imaginary it's hilarious so go check them out i was dying without further ado let me uh, introduce to you some of my favorite tools that i use for broom closet and for my art thanks again Hey everyone, so this is the second time I'm recording this. I recorded it once last night, uh, but there was a lot of glare on my screen, so I'm gonna try to reshoot it. Uh, my first tool that I love using, and it was a major commitment and investment, is this iPad that you can use the Apple Pencil with. And I know it's kind of dark down here, but um, this Apple Pencil is about like nine, $100, $90, and uh, they came out with a new one just recently, and I'm going to show you how this one charges. It's really inconvenient, it looks stupid, but it's uh, that's how you charge it, and it pops out. I had to purchase this little gizmo on the end because this thing doesn't um, stay put very easily, and it's very easily lost. I would say that I use this tool the most um, just to get my ideas down. And with the iPad, I use it for my bullet journaling and book of shadows, which I have shown you, um, my grimoire work where I've already taken you through. But I use it teamed with this app called Procreate. And this is where I start all my sketches. And some of them you have seen, I have shared the time lapse of 
my Belladonna girl. And I was one of those people who loved buying new notebooks or new sketch pads. And with this, I think I'm saving a lot of paper uh, to just get my ideas down right away with the Apple Pencil. So this is my favorite tool also because it will keep the time-lapse video of your progress, your progression. So I like that. I, I just uploaded the Baba Yaga one and you can see that here. But it has a way for you to share your file as a Photoshop, a PDF, JPEG, PNG, or a TIFF. Or you can share your video um, and I tend to upload it to Google Drive and then download it to my computer. So this is my very favorite tool to use, uh, or at least my most used tool right now. And that is with the app called Procreate and the Apple Pencil that makes it really easy to sketch. The next one is called OBS and you can see it working here. It's a screen capture platform and I was using this for Twitch for a long time and you can live stream things or record them. So sometimes I'll use this to capture when I'm using Photoshop um, or different aspects for different videos. The next one I'm going to show you is the movie editing software that I use. It's called Filmora. You can find it online and download the free version. Uh, just Google Filmora. Filmora. I think it was like $60 for a lifetime um, login. So I bit the bullet and I did that because there was a big hassle with trying to get around it. Um, and I did that for a while. Uh, so downloading Filmora, they have um, it make, they make it really easy to set up. So let me show you what that looks like. As you can see, this is the OBS capture working. I'm able to film what I'm doing on my laptop. I'm letting it open. You can see some of the projects there on the right side, um, and it allows you to just drag and drop import all kinds of media, but they also have a library of free songs you can download, as well as effects. And those are up here, uh, the different titles I use for intros, outros, you can save them um, individually. And if you do purchase the Filmora, this is where you would log in and then they won't put the watermark at the end of your video. The next tool I use digitally is Photoshop and I uh, know it's expensive. I got this version before you had to pay a yearly thing and I downloaded it, but I've used Photoshop since I was in high school. Um, another thing I team with this Photoshop is this platform called Lazy Nizumi and it helps um, just make your lines smoother and they have a bunch of different options for that and you can adjust the level of smoothness. So quick segue into the Wacom tablet that I use for Photoshop and I wanted to show you how the Lazy Nizumi works. So this Wacom, you're able to adjust the stand in the back. I usually have it on the lowest one, but if you're feeling really intense, it goes pretty high. My only problem with the Wacom is the cords that you need for your computer. It has one big cord that goes into the Wacom directly, but then you have to have an HDMI and a USB plugged in to your computer. Now right here you can see I'm grabbing the Photoshop window in my computer and I'm able to drag it to right to the Wacom tablet, which is really cool. And I'm going to try to show you, this is now the Lazy Nozumi is off. I'm going to open up a new file and show you what my handwriting would look like. And this um, pen, Wacom pen, comes with the tablet and it has a couple buttons on it that you can adjust um, your settings to, whichever it feels more natural for you. So here we'll just do a quick uh, name. This is how my normal handwriting looks. And I'm going to now turn on the Lazy Zoomy on the laptop, desktop. And you'll see it takes a little time to catch up, but the line is more smooth. It finds the average between the lines and makes the line gradually more smooth. So we're going to try that again. And if you notice that took a long time to catch up, the number I had it at was like 44. So I'm turning it down to about 33, 32. That's usually a good setting for me. And as you can see, it just makes the line a lot more pleasing to the eye. All right, we'll try one more. We'll do broom, closet. 
artistry. And this is my everyday handwriting. And I think I still have the setting turned down to 33, so that was with the zoomy off, and I just turned it back on. But see, it has a hard time catching up. Over here on the side, there are some settings. I'm looking for which one is the undo button. I'm gonna try this again. And with this, you do have to make broader strokes um, and go a little slower. And I will use this when I'm touching up any watercolors that I bring into Photoshop um, using the eraser tool. It works for both pen and eraser. I keep Wacom in the little satchel that it came in, just so it doesn't get any more scratches on the surface than it already has. And I keep it in the drawer beside my desk. The next tool I will show you is my little light table from Hyowin. Hyowin. Not sure how to pronounce it. Also let you know that I'll link all of this below, but it is also on the Broom Closet website under tools and it's all listed there. All the links to Amazon, how I got it, where I got it are there on my website. It's super easy to set up. It's really thin and it has a couple different light settings. You hold the power button down to adjust the dimness, but it just connects with the USB port. Uh, but you can see it's a little bigger than the size of an 8.5 by 11. The actual dimensions are 22 by 31 centimeters or like 8 and 3 quarter inches by 12 and a quarter inches. I'm looking for a USB port to plug it into because one is taken up by the mouse, one is taken up by the Wacom, and the other one was taken up by my webcam. Here we go. The only negative thing about this one is sometimes my hand will hit it while I'm tracing and it'll shut off. But other than that, it works really well and it's super low profile. This little guy is the Logitech 1080p webcam, and I got this to use uh, for Twitch streaming, and it works pretty well. When you are seeing an overhead view of me doing a time lapse of my art, I'm using this guy. I have it set up to the light above my desk. And when he is recording, it has its own quick capture setting in the desktop, so I just turn him on. And attached is a Gobi or Joby tripod and it had an attachment for your phone that kind of squeezes the phone together but you can also put any universal camera on it and it's not strong enough to hold up my actual camera but for the Logitech 1080p it holds it up fairly well on the light I have to really really crank it down sometimes but this is what I use to do time lapses of all my art now this little beauty is the Sony A5100 and I bought this camera specifically for our Iceland trip but it works so well. So anytime you're seeing me on the usually using this because it has all the great settings for aperture um, and background blur and lighting. And the only problem I have with it is that it overheats pretty easily but I bought it because it has this flip back, hello there I am, this flip camera um, so I'm able to line things up. But as I've said, the battery tends to overheat and there are different suggestions. You can either open the battery door or get an extra battery, which kind of sucks. And here is another Joby tripod. This one is a little more hardcore. It has an adjustment um, dial here on the side, but it also has a level that is underneath the camera so you're really able to get those really pretty shots. This is also able to shoot straight down. Um, it's been really sturdy. I haven't tried attaching it to any tree limbs or anything like that. So it's been reliable nonetheless. On to some Agua Pens. I have a Derwent one. This was given to me. I honestly haven't bought any of these for myself. I have two Pentel ones. This one I filled with a mixture of watercolor and black so I can do some fine lines. This is another Pentel Agua brush. It just has water in it right now. I don't use them a whole lot. I'm still getting used to them. All of these again were given to me. These are called Artister Curve. I don't know the type has been rubbed off of them thus far. And the brushes that I own, I get usually in the value pack at Michael's every now and then I'll splurge for the professional line, but these work just fine. I will mention that I own a separate set of brushes for the oil painting that I do. 
This thing is awesome. This is a Molotow Masking Fluid Pen, and it's a super fine tip. I originally used another very fine tip, but it um, had a lot of problems, and it smells. I don't know if you've ever smelled masking fluid. Maybe mine has gone bad. I'm not really sure. But um, as you see, I, can bear, I can't even get the top off correctly. It always gets stuck. It always gets clogged, and you have to really fight with not getting bubbles. You're not supposed to shake it. You're not supposed to disturb it. So as you can see, this part fits on the top um, and it has a dull needle fitted into the lid that you should be able to put back in correctly, which I cannot. I can never get this and it has just given me such a headache that I don't use it anymore. <laughs> gotcha, take that. Okay, so I don't use that fine tip. I would really hi highly recommend the Molotow tip brush. Again, you can get it at Michael's. I think I got this one on Amazon, however. Here comes the collection of rulers. I have this little one I probably took from the girls I nanny, I don't remember. This one came in a set for the organizing, home organizing business that I started, and I finished a course in it, so it has all these um, scaled down sizes for tables, beds, things like that. Um, random shapes. This I got from Amazon and I got it because I was really into bullet journaling and it is, um, you're able to make perfect circles. It had a ton of different sizes. Mine got crushed somehow, so it has a little bit of a wiggle to it. I don't use it a lot. I think I used it in some sigil work I did in the last Book of Shadows page I did. And this is a Michaels bot uh, triangle square that I use, you've seen me use before, and this I really splurged on. It is a heavy duty, um, very sturdy uh, right angle with some more circles. And those I'll typically hang up here. I put a couple screws in my wall and they all kind of just fit really nicely. And as you can probably tell from most of my videos, my desk is really small, so anything I can put up and out of the way, I will do so. On that other peg, I usually put my artist tape, but I couldn't find it for this video. Let us take a tour beside the desk. As you can see, I keep most of my things here in cups. I have dirty watercolor water. I have a little pouch with my washi tape in it. There's one cup for watercolor pens uh, and paint brushes in the other cup I just have your standard drawing pencils. Here in my first little cubby, I have watercolor pencils. These are Michael's Artist Loft pencils. They're the generic kind you can get in the value packs. In the second drawer, I have my pens, Micron pens. Um, this is when I was really into bullet journal journaling. These are Tombow pens. I have a set of Faber-Castell pens. These work focus there it goes um, I'll use those every now and then not too often the micron pens are the ones I use the most they come in all different tip sizes and they don't bleed through your paper which I love and they um, they're pretty expensive though I am also have a set of white gel pens I use to put highlights on my watercolors because you can't lighten things after you've gone over them with watercolor the last drawer I have are just your standard drawing utensils Sets of drawing pencils I've collected over the years, erasers, tortillions. Lastly are my paint sets. I have a palette I use for making big bulks of colors for skin tones or um, big washes. This is a maiden palette that I got from Amazon. This one was the original palette that I used I got from Michaels and you can tell one's a little bigger than the other. This one is very dusty. It has not been used. I tried to pull all the old watercolor out of here. It's kind of stuck together. Here we go. Um, as you can see it has dried. There's still some left in here so I guess this could be my emergency kit. This part pulled out at one point. It doesn't anymore. It's a little stuck now but I wanted more space. I wanted to create more palettes. It opens up in a trifold, so it takes up a little more space on the desk, but the little compartments inside you can remove, rearrange. I put the name of the color on the side so I can refill it super easily. They're all organized for me, and I love having them in um, their color families. The only thing was I had to order these little squares separately, um, but it's sturdy, it works, it holds my paints. I'll end up expanding at some point, I'm sure. 
So I hope this answered a few questions and gave you a few ideas of how you can do something different with your art or if um, you use something that you really love, I would love to hear what that is. Again, all of these tools will be linked below and they are also linked on Broom Closet's website, www.broomclosetartistry.com. Be sure to visit me on Instagram, go check out Bubble Pipe Productions, um, and everyone have a great week. Hope to talk to you soon. Blessed Ostara if we don't talk before then.